turn to me and have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my loneliness and suffering, and take away all my sins, my God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Today we celebrate Mass for Tuesday of the ninth week in ordinary time, back to the wearing of the week. We begin our celebration as we always do by humbly standing in God's presence, asking for His mercy and forgiveness. So we're going to spend this sacred time and this holy day in His name. For they pass quickly, and we drift away. 
In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. In, In every, every age, O Lord, Lord you, you have been our refuge. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to ensnare him in his speech. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me denarius to look at. They brought one to him and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to them, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone, parishioners, family, friends, visitors. We're glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning in the ninth week of Ordinary Time. Today, as we go back into Ordinary Time, we see that the Pharisees just won't give up. They're back at their old church again. They're always trying to trap Jesus, always trying to get him all wrapped up in his words. Why? because they're trying to turn him in. They're trying to make him an enemy of the state. They're trying to get rid of him. They're so jealous and envious of him, they'll do anything to get him out of the way. So they came up with this example. All right. Here we are. We have the coin that has Caesar's head on it. And they asked, Jesus, is it lawful for us to pay tax or not? And basically, it was, it was a damn we do and damn we don't situation with Jesus. If he says pay the tax, then he's like in collusion with the Roman occupiers. He's betraying his own people. Remember, the people were, were very angry about it and resentful having to pay taxes to their occupying Romans. But if he says, don't pay the tax, then they can go to the Romans and say, look, he's an insurrectionist. He's trying to overthrow the government. He's plotting against you. So they thought they had him cornered. They thought it was checkmate. But it wasn't. Checkmate, but not checkmate. Why? Because Jesus said to them, let me see that coin. He didn't say yes or no. He just said, let me see the coin. They show him the coin. And the coin has a head on it, a picture on it. And so he says, this denarius, this coin, whose head is it? And he said, well, it's Caesar's. So what he did was sort of outfox them, did an end run. Why? because 
back in the day of Jesus, the way an emperor had power was whether or not they used his money. That's the way he paid his armies and all different things, all the people who supported him and kept him up in power. So all his money was printed with his name, his, his picture on it, his inscription on it. But it was considered his property. It was his. See the difference? This coin belonged to Caesar. It was his. He made it. And so Jesus said, well, if it has Caesar's picture on it, that means this belongs to him. So give him back his property. It's his. But he also said, also though, give to God what belongs to God. So he wouldn't fall into the trap of saying one or the other. He really sort of said neither. What he says is, yes, that was that man's property, Caesar's, that's, that coin was his. You have an obligation to give that to him. He didn't say you have to pay taxes, he said that's his property, give it to him. But also, you also owe God. So give to God what belongs to God. And of course, we know God is supreme and comes first. So very subtly, he was saying, yes, that's to the property, give that to him. But remember, God comes first. And you first give everything that belongs to God, to God. And he left them stunned. So it was checkmate for Jesus. He let them hanging in the Lord, saying, now what do we do? He outfoxed us when we thought we were going to outfox him. And the moral of the story is sort of, on the side note, is we should never try to outfox God. He will always outsmart us. He'll always win any argument. It's like trying to argue with your mom or your dad when you're a teenager. You never, you never win. But it's good for us to realize that if we follow God's commands, we'll always do what's right. And part of this story as well is to, is very timely in the sense that, you know, do we listen to civil authorities or not? Have you noticed opening prayer this morning? I, you probably never heard before, we've actually prayed for the state of New Jersey in the opening prayer, um, and for our country. Because as citizens and Catholics, we have an obligation to participate in our civil life as much as well as our, our church community life. Somehow people make this false, and it's false, it's incorrect. Anybody tells you separation of church and state, that's an erroneous statement. If you actually do your research and do your homework, what, was, what that is all about is the fact that the, the state cannot impose a state religion on people. We have freedom to religion. It's not about the separation, that's, that's, a, that's a fabricated lie and falsehood. So don't let anyone tell you about separation of, of state and church. Just the opposite from the church perspective, we're called to be good citizens because we have something to bring to the table. And don't let our PC police tell us, well, no, you don't, your, your religion, your, your faith is private. It's not. It's personal. Very, but I very personal. I have that personal relation with the Lord Jesus. But it's not private. A mass is in private. Our worship is in private. Very personal, but not private. It's meant for all to hear and see. The gospel is meant for everyone to hear. And if we fail to live up to our obligation to be good citizens, then in, in part we fail to, to live up our calling as disciples of Jesus. Because Jesus is always challenging authorities, always peacefully in the face of authority and questioning them and holding them to the task. We're called to that to do as well, participate in the civic discourse, not to surrender the public square. And we're not imposing, we're proposing. We don't impose our faith, our religion, our beliefs, we propose. And we propose in the spirit of Jesus, then as Jesus, as you know, Jesus has one way of winning over hearts and minds. Even though he always had a confrontation with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the Rhodians, they're always going to be the haters. They'll always be there. But 
compassion to stop, stop us from reaching out to those who haven't heard the good news that's entrusted to us to spread for Jesus. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become the body of Christ, our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the body, and work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual. Blessed be God forever.
pray, my friends, in my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. When the circle was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this.
the mystery of the When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember the Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your daughter, Gertrude O'Donoghue, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Gertrude, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our Lady now, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Saints Francis and Claire, each of our patron saints and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, for the light of our teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious and grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, boys. And with your spirit. And to the last offer to each other, the Son of the Lord Jesus.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Come in by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you, not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you tune in tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.